Jared Poff here, and Jared has a four ball arsenal. So what I would like you to do is we're going to try to identify what each one of these balls is for, what type of lane condition. Okay. From a heavy oil lane condition, medium heavy oil lane condition, medium dry lane condition, and a drier lane condition. Okay. And these are his strike balls, his first ball opportunity uh, arsenal. We're not concerned about his spare balls here. And as we watched uh, when Jared bowled, depending on where it's at in this video here, Jared matches up very well. He's got uh, medium ball speed, medium rev rate, a little bit higher rev rate, so he would be categorized as a, as a number three bowler in our chart from one through five, maybe even a 2.5 because his rev rate might slightly dominate his ball speed. So looking at your arsenal here, if you were on a heavily oiled lane condition of these four balls, which one would you pick first? If I was on heavy oil, I would choose this one right here. Okay. Smash it. All right. Do you know what surface is on that? I believe 2000. Okay, 2000. Yep. So we're going to put that here and that represents this heavy oil ball. If the lanes start to dry out and let's call it a medium heavy oil lane condition, which ball would you switch to next? I would probably go to my pin slasher. To the pin slasher. Yep. Okay. And do you know what surface is on that ball? And that would be 3000. 3000. Okay. And then your medium dry lane condition? Would be my ambush. Okay. And then that would make this the dryer link. Do you know what surface is on this? Uh, factory. Okay. Factory. Alright. And then this would be your dry lane ball. Do you know yep. what surface is on that? Yep. Uh, 2000, but it's originally 4000 polished. I just... Okay, so you think it's worn into about 2000. Yeah. Yep. Alright. So here we have his bowling balls categorized. And luckily we have four chairs here from heavy oil, medium heavy, medium dry, and dry. So now what we're going to do. We're going to go to our system, and because we're going to consider him a number, I'm going to put you in the number two category just for the sake of this exercise. He actually fits between a two and a three, but for what we're doing here today, we can put him in as a number two. So we'll go to the system. I, I believe the chart is on page 22, and we'll set the surfaces on his bowling balls uh, following the guide. So now we're over at the ball spinner and we have the ball that he picked as his heavy oil ball. So according to our system, because he is, we're considering him a number two player, where his rev rate slightly dominates his ball speed, for his heavy oil ball, we want to go with the gray pad. This system is designed for our least expensive kit that you can buy with the ball spinner. There are other uh, different grits that you can use but we try to keep this as simple as possible. So what we're going to do, we put the ball in the ball spinner with the grip facing up, put the gray pad on, and because I'm surfacing down, meaning I'm adding surface to the ball, there was more polish on this ball than what we're going to, we can do it in one move. Turn the ball over and do the other side. Using pretty firm pressure on it. So for his heavy oil ball, we have gray pad. Okay, have that. This is medium heavy. Which, if we go to the chart for medium heavy on a two. He has two choices. He can go 1,000 or 1,200 grit. So we're going to start with 1,000 for him. I'm doing this with dry paper because the paper's brand new. I do have a cup of water here. We can do this wet sand as far. The water will help the uh, paper from clogging up and it'll help cut into the ball and make the job a little bit faster and it'll also make your paper last a little bit longer. And then if we look at our chart for his medium dry ball, it gives us two options for him, which would be 1200 or compound. So I'm going to do both actually. I'm going to hit it with 1200. go to the compound. That's the extreme doll that comes in the kit. The kit also has a towel in it, 
So what we don't want to do is interfere the polish with the compound. So what I'll do is I'll quarter it up and we'll use compound on one side and polish on the other side of the towel. Compound is a mixture that will remove scratches from the ball but it does not have any slip agents in it so it allows the ball to make full contact with the lane. So whatever layout and design this ball had in it as far as back end movement, when you use compound it will maintain that back end movement. When you switch to polish what happens is polish has a slip agent in it which will make the ball travel just a little bit further down the lane and cut back just a hair of the back end reaction. Okay? And this is his dry lane ball. So over here we had, we put a thousand on this ball, and then this one we went uh, 1200 compound. And this one will be polish, I believe. That's right, we have your two choices you can go compound or polish. And the difference would be depending on what lane conditions he's bowling on. If he's bowling on a flood and heavy oil lane condition, his dry lane ball would wind up with a compound. If he's on a drier lane condition, we want to use a polish. Since we're bowling on wood, and if you look at your system, you'll see wood is softer than synthetics, so the ball will get a bigger footprint when it touches the lane. So, in general, wood hooks more than synthetics. So we're going to go with polish as we're on wood. If I was on pro anvil lane, I would probably have him compound in one number up. Okay, more, more aggressive surface. And again, this is, we don't know. We don't know what we're going to find out there, but we can make some educated guesses. There's all types of compounds and polishes available in the market. Um, we go with the pro's choice from Lane Concepts. It's a very simple system that works. If you have another polish that you like to use, go ahead. You will see maybe some slight differences from one polish to the next. So find something you like to work with and get acclimated with it. And uh, that way you'll know what the results will be when you go to the ball. The other thing I want to point out, Jared is one of the better bowlers in our area. So he has a lot of knowledge of his equipment and of the surfaces he has on the balls. But what we're trying to do is develop a system that gives us predictable results. So he may have had the perfect ball in his hand and there I went and changed the surface. But we need to know what's on the ball, so that way, if we don't like the reaction, we have a starting point so we know what to move to. Alright, so now we have that one polished up. You see that nice shine on it. Whenever I use the polish, I like to go back and cut it with a little bit of cleaner. Because if you don't, the first three or four shots you make will not give you an accurate read. So we want to get that, just that little bit of a film off of there. Clean it up a little bit. And you can do that whether it's sandpaper, compound, polish, doesn't matter. But when I use the polish, I like to just take a little bit of it off with a little bit of cleaner. And there we go. So I don't know how good the camera can pick that up, but you can see that ball is a lot shinier than his dryer lane ball. All right, we'll mark that on the board. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to take them out on, we have some different lane conditions here, and we want to measure the separation between the balls. All right, so this here is polish. And we may come back and adjust these depending on the environment that we're in, but this is a good starting point. If you look at it, you can see his heavy oil ball has the most surface. If you look to the surface texture chart that we have in there, gray pad, is more texture than polish obviously. So the ball is designed for heavy oil. I want the most amount of uh, 
texture on the ball. When bowling ball companies design bowling balls, they have an idea in mind when they make them. So they know when they produce this bowling ball, they're producing it, say, for a heavy oil lane condition or a drier lane condition. And inherently what they do then is they make cores that match up for that cover. So what we don't want to do, if we can avoid it, is take a ball that's designed for heavy oil and move it down here and make it a dry lane ball. We can get more skid down the lane. We can make it roll a little better on a drier lane condition. But what happens is if you think of the core of the ball like the engine that's creating the horsepower, if you have a lot of horsepower built into the bowling ball, you're going to need a tire underneath of it. And the shell and the texture of the ball creates the tire. So balls that are designed for heavy oil generally have a core inside of it that has more horsepower than a ball that's designed for a drier lane. So if you don't match the horsepower to the tires, it's very difficult to control the reaction of the ball. All right, That's why we want to keep the ball as it was designed by the manufacturer as close to the category as we can get. If we have a bowler, and in Jared's case, he has a multitude of bowling balls at his disposal, so that's great. But some bowlers only have one or two balls, and that's fine. So then what we need to do, we can move from one category to the next very easily and make them roll well, uh, but what we'll have to do then, we have limitations on how much uh, we can give you as far as, so you're going to need to be more versatile with the less bowling balls you have. All right, the other idea is if you would take these four bowling balls that he picked out and put the exact same surface on all four balls, what you would see is the ball that was manufactured for heavy oil would still give you a little bit more hook than the ball that was manufactured for the dry lane. And that's the horsepower and the cover stock nature coming through. It'll shine through on the lane condition. All right, they'll be a lot closer together, but you can do it, all right? So what we want to do, though, is keep them as close to the category as what we can. And also, because that happens with the same surface on it, if I had a ball designed for heavy oil, and he only had two balls in his arsenal, and he had another ball that handled medium dry from the manufacturer the way it intended, great. But if I reversed these and put, took his heavy oil ball and put compound on it, and took his medium dry ball and put gray pad on it, what you'll have is two balls that are a lot closer to together. So it doesn't help him very much make good choices when he's bowling. It's like taking two of the same ball with you to the bowling center. That's great as long as you're matched up. But what happens when the lane conditions change? Or you go into an environment where they're extremely dry or extremely oil. You'll have a good ball at the start of the match maybe, but when the lanes change, you have nothing to switch to. So if you have a four ball arsenal and you're walking into a tournament, a house you never bowled in before, or even your, your house where you bowl league, if you're taking four balls with you, two of them better not work. That's the rule that I use. Two of those balls better roll terrible in that lane condition. And then two of them should roll good. We'll focus on the two that are rolling good and find out which one rolls the best. Okay? That'll be our benchmark ball. That's the one we start with in that environment. But then we, will, we should know when we're finished with this exercise exactly how to ball down. And go to less surface as the lanes dry out. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're doing. We're going to turn the lanes on and we're going to see how much separation now Jared has with these four bowling balls. So we're going to chart that. There's a chart included in your manual. Now that we have the surface on him, what we want to do is go out and get him lined up on a lane condition with whichever ball it takes. Then when he picked that ball, he'll tell me which one of these four balls it is. Then what we want to do is see how many boards he has to move with his feet. Let's say, for sake of example here, we don't know what we're going to have. Let's say it's this ball here that lines him up perfect. Then we'll, we'll force him to roll this ball and see how many boards he has to move in order to strike. And that'll be what we call separation. Then we'll make a move to this ball. How many more boards does he have to move at least to hit the pocket? Sometimes if you're matched up wrong, you may not strike, but you can at least hit the pocket. And then how many boards did he move with his feet? Now that we know that, we're going to chart that on his paper. So if he goes to another house or a different lane condition and he's bowling and he's striking with this ball, and he, now the lane conditions change, he knows he needs to move. He'll know exactly which ball to move to, and he'll know exactly how many boards he has to move his feet. So it'll help your decision-making process faster. When we work with the top bowlers in the world and the, and the good regional players in our area, this is what we teach them because 
decision making will add pins to your score. If you have two bowlers of the same caliber and they're bowling on the same lane condition and they're both striking at will, but now all of a sudden the lane condition changes. The one that knows which ball to switch to and why and how many boards to move their feet will have a two or three shot advantage over the guy that doesn't. At least. Because if that guy goes and picks the wrong ball out because he doesn't know this stuff, then he goes and he's fishing around with his feet trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, our player is already lined up. You get a huge advantage over your competition. And that's really what this is all about. Okay, so now let's take the four balls. We're going to go to what we call a typical house shot on wood, and we'll see what the separation is. Okay, Jared, because he's a, I would consider him between a two and three. If you noticed, he, his first shot was actually with his medium heavy old lane ball, which has 1,000 grit on it. He threw it one time and didn't like the look it gave him on the lane. So what he did next was he, what we call ball down. He went to his ball for a medium dry lane condition, which makes sense because he's on wood lane conditions and on a typical house shot. So this, you probably, I don't know, we would agree. This hooks maybe a little more than what you typically see when you bowl in synthetic lane, when they're fresh, right? So this is a little bit drier lane condition, and that makes sense because it's softer and the footprint of the ball is bigger. And the footprint is the contact area of the ball. The softer the surface, the wider the footprint. Okay, so go ahead. Now, if you threw your medium heavy old ball, didn't like the look again. You do the first shot off your hand, correct? Okay, so now you went to your medium drive. Does that look better or worse? Or oh, yeah, I like that look. Yeah. Okay, so that, you like that look. Now, and are you lined up with it yet? You know where you want to stand, Yep. in order to hit the pot. Okay, let's mark that. Let's, let, we can do it this way. You go ahead and tell me where it is you stand with your with your feet. And then what we want to do is we want to check separation. And okay. so we're going to make the switch ball. You need to tell me how many boards you're moving left or right. Okay. okay. So only you can tell me that, we're going to go. Okay, um, right now I'm standing at 25. Okay, so you stand at 25. All right. And he's finding the pocket standing 25 on a good shot. And that's fine. Remember what we say in the manual, there's only three kind of shots you're ever going to throw. Perfect, acceptable, and unacceptable. Unacceptable shots happen. Okay? And when you do, there's not much you can do about it. Just try to focus on making an acceptable shot. People that try to throw perfect shots all the time usually don't do well because as soon as they're off slightly when they're bowling, they tighten up and they grab. So the trick is to bowl to an acceptable range. Most bowlers bowl in an acceptable range is what happens in those shots that's going to determine who wins the tournament, who cashes, and who doesn't. Okay? So we just we don't want a ball that forces us to have to throw the ball perfectly or we're not matched up. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's take the ball that you would have for a medium heavy oil lane condition and tell me, and go ahead and roll, we don't know the answer, okay. but how many boards, and it may take you a few shots, based from here is our benchmark, how many boards do you have to move with your feet in order to strike, okay. or hit the pot? Okay, you can see he moved further left on the approach with generally the same speed as what he threw with his benchmark ball, and the ball still went high, correct? Yeah. So it's, it's way too much ball than what you want. <laughs> and that's fine. But we want to know what the center is. Okay. Go ahead and roll another one. Five board separation from his medium dry ball to his medium heavy ball. Good. Now let's get your ball for an oily lane condition now. Okay, now how many boards further left are you from the last one? The last ball three. Okay, so we have three board separation from his medium heavy ball to his heavy oil ball. Now let's go to your dry lane ball. Okay, as you can see.
see that ball sailed down the lane. So there's some moving. There is a big difference. Yeah. All right. Great. Now how many boards do you have to move? So from your benchmark ball to the dry lane ball, you move four boards. Excellent. Okay, that's a, that is a very good typical separation that most bowlers are going to see on a house shot. If you're bowling on a sport pattern, you may see that separation is much greater because the pattern is what we call flatter. There's less, there's less of a ratio of the oil in the middle than the friction on the outside. So for high school coaches, college team coaches, uh, tournament bowlers, this is, this is a great system. Now he knows the separation on the house shot. What you want to do next is go out to the bowling center when uh, they have a sports shot they go on or, or an FIQ pattern or something that's much more challenging to bowl on. And keep the same surfaces on the ball, but measure the separation again. And see does it stay the same or does it change? Because the decisions you make when today you would know from your benchmark ball when you go to your dryer lane ball that you had four board separation. It tells you how many boards once your benchmark ball on today's environment changes and I gotta go to the dry lane ball, I know I can move my feet four boards and I should get the pocket. But on a sports shot that could be different. So it's important that for your for your high school and college team coaches, if you know where you're bowling and what pattern we're going to put out to practice on it before you go there. Now, the pattern will play different in your center as it will in the next center, but that separation you're going to find is almost always the same. Very, very close. So, when you, especially when you're going on the flat patterns, when the lanes change, the adjustments become harder to make because they don't always go predictable what you're used to on a house shot. But if you can do this work ahead of time, now you go and bowl on a flat pattern. You know exactly what the separation is. It's just a matter of what ball do I start out with, the one that gives me the best look. And when the lanes change, go to my chart that has been done on that pattern. What is the separation? It'll tell you what ball to go to and what adjustment to make. Okay? It's a pretty cool system. All right? Have any questions on anything we did here? No, I'm real happy. Okay. So now what I want you to do, real quick before we finish, put the balls back in the four categories. Okay, these are the same four categories that Jared had picked originally, but now the difference is we know exactly what surface is on the bowling balls, okay? And we've charted that. We've written that down on our chart. So if I say to him the next time, which was kind of a test at the beginning, when I said what surface was on it, he knows exactly what surface is on his ball, and he knows why he switches from one ball to the next. Now it's also important, now Jared only rolled a few shots with these bowling balls, so he can leave these covers alone. He doesn't need to freshen them up. But if he goes and bowls a tournament or a league match, and he uses one particular ball for the entire night, or whatever balls he uses, it's important that when he's done, go home and get your ball spinner out and freshen them up. Which means, if you happen to use your medium dry ball, which was your benchmark ball, we know we have 1200 with compound on it. That will not stay 1200 and compound forever. That changes because of the friction that's encountered as the ball's traveling down the lane. So you can't expect in 30 games that ball's going to roll like it did today. So what he has to do is, and, and the more often you can do this, the better your results are going to be and the more predictable they're going to be. So when you go home, you pull out the ball spinner, you freshen them up. Put, go back and hit compound and 1200, I'm sorry, 1200 and then compound and then your 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 separation and boards will be the same. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good job.